Hey, man. Oh, hi. How are you? Good, good. How are you? I'm doing really good right now. Nice. Uh, I uh, so it's out, so so the film's out in the states. You had you've had a chance to watch it. Yeah, I just watched it yesterday, actually. Cool. Nice. Yeah, I loved it. Um, yeah. So I got some questions ready. Um, can start firing those off if you're ready to go. Yeah, go. We'll um, we'll uh, we'll obviously have people slowly keep joining, but let's get into yeah. it. All right. So, can you just explain, like, just in general, what shark calling is, and kind of tell us how long it's been going on in Australia? Yeah, absolutely. So, first of all, I think let's just talk about the word culling as, mm. as a general principle, um, as as it applies to sharks, but also other things. So a cull is an activity where you set out to reduce the population of a wild animal uh, via selective slaughter. That's just, that's approximately the, the dictionary definition of a, of a cull. You can obviously look it up yourself and see exactly what it is. Um, now, these programs in Australia that have shark nets or drum lines, that's exactly what they are. So they are there to catch and kill sharks, be it the net by entangling them or the hook by hooking them and then they die. So, um, yeah, the, it, a lot of people think shark nets are a barrier and keep sharks away from beaches or whatever it might be. People don't yeah. really know what drum lines are at all. Like it doesn't have the word hook on it. It, like, it doesn't really make sense to most people and to the general public. Mm. Uh, so... It's really misunderstood program here in Australia, but yep. it is a cull. It is designed to capture and to kill sharks uh, and to reduce their populations in certain regions. The logic being that less sharks would keep beaches safe. Now, mm -hmm. over the 83 years that this horrible experiment has been going on in Australia, uh, started in 1937, probably 84 four years now, actually, um, th that's been proven not to work statistically safety wise it does not work dropping the shark population does not drop the amount of shark bites or shark bite fatalities it just it just does not work but yeah look short answer to the question is it's the selective slaughter of particular species of animal to reduce their population and that's exactly what these programs in australia are uh, mm -hmm. as well as two other places in the world they run them being reunion and island off madagascar which is a french territory uh, mm -hmm. and also um, in south africa one state of south africa Okay. Wow, that's unbelievable. So why do you think the film um, is really going to be able to show people that, you know, sharks are not the issue with their oceans and show them, like, why we don't need to be afraid of them, I guess? Yeah, look, we, the, we tried to pack a lot into this film, a, 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 as mm -hmm. you do, and it's all, always a bit of a, it's always a bit of a balance um, in terms of, uh, you know, how much you can fit in without, without watering down the, the, the original, the actual message you're trying to get through. So we try and balance showing that sharks are not what Hollywood or the media tell us they are. They're not yeah. out there. They're not hunting us. There's no rogue sharks that once they've got the, the taste for human blood, they, they keep hunting more and more humans. Um, that you, you, you can peacefully coexist with them. And, and millions of people do every single day. It just doesn't make the yeah. news. When, when a shark is in an area and swims around and then takes off and it left a thousand people alone, that doesn't make the news. Exactly. Uh, so we try and balance that in terms of showing that, that they're not out there. They're not, they're, they're not out there hunting humans. They're not blo uh, uh, yeah, bloodthirsty killers, um, yeah. showing we can coexist with them. Uh, and then balance, obviously, sh sh use that to show why these programs are so, are so ineffective, inhumane, you name it. Culling, culling an animal that's just doing its thing in its own habitat um, yeah. out of a sense of fear to provide the public with a false sense of security. Um, yeah, is, is something I, I don't agree with. And, and as the director, obviously the film, the film also takes that position, but um, it's all laid out and we try and lay it out in quite a factual way and introduce the audience to all the facts for them to make up their own mind. Yeah. Uh, but I think if you're open to the facts and you're open to listening and hearing and watching it, um, I think you only land on one conclusion and that's, that's the logical conclusion. Absolutely. The film, I mean, the film did a great job at, you know, showing everything, laying out all the facts. And I mean, I really, like, I was fully convinced by the end, you know, like it was really great in that regard. Um, 
So one of my, I guess, one of the most impactful parts of, for me in the movie um, was the part when the Queensland and New South Wales governments declined to film or declined to appear in the film multiple times. Like what, what message do you think that sends to the public? Um, yeah, good, good, good question. Um, that they, th this actually just came up on a, this was a question when we did it, we did a national TV story on, on the, one of the biggest networks on one of the biggest um, evening no news shows actually on, and, and this exact question came up. So, so yeah. I have a pretty good answer handy because I've just had to deliver it. Um, they don't want to talk about it in my opinion, because they know they're wrong. You, you don't want to sit down in front of a documentary filmmaker in my case, or uh, uh, in the case of this news show that we're on, you don't want to sit down in front of an investigative reporter and talk about this program because science, science isn't on your side. Facts aren't on your side. Arguably ethics aren't on your side. Uh, nothing is on your side. If you're the person running and perpetuating these programs, uh, nothing's on your side. So it is, and I understand why they decline interviews. I truly do understand it. I would probably do the same if I was in their shoes because you can't you can't sit down and defend the program to someone like me who's knowledgeable on it or, mm. or someone like, uh, you know, a news reporter who's knowledgeable on it. You, you, you will get picked to pieces. Like you will get absolutely torn apart with facts and science and stats. Like you can't defend it. So yeah. I, I understand their position and I almost, in a, in a weird way, I don't want to say respect. Respect is the wrong word. No, I don't respect it. I get it. I get it. I wouldn't mm. want to front up and talk about this either. So, um, yeah, when nothing's on your side, fact, science, reality, nothing like that is on your side and you've, you've got nothing to bring to the table, mm -hmm. um, it's far safer to not put yourself in that position, not put yourself on camera uh, to be caught out and instead just issue a kind of a blanket statement with a lot of political fluff and kind of nothing speak. Yeah, it's easier to just like hide behind a smoke screen and just kind of do nothing, right? Exactly right, exactly right. And um, yeah, yeah, I, I see why they don't take it because because the, 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 the two, three years of research I've done on this topic, like you confidently, confidently just pick apart any of their positions because you know all their positions they, mm -hmm. they, they always stick to the same positions and yeah. they're easy to pick apart just you could just go into the stats and the science a little bit and their position falls apart so um yeah i, I wouldn't want to be i wouldn't be wouldn't, wouldn't want to be on camera defending that either if i was them. <laughs> it'd be pretty tough i'd imagine um so in the film you know paul de gelder says the culling of sharks is not a solution it's a false sense of security at best so why does the government and politicians keep standing by these claims that culling does keep swimmers safe, even though the facts and all the data shows otherwise? It's out of, in my opinion, it's out of political fear. So fear of the, what the opposition might do or say or spin something into. Uh, if, that, if they were to take what should happen, which is steps to modernise this program to a non-lethal program, um, it would be better for the environment and it would also be safer for humans because these non-lethal technologies are more effective than yeah. these lethal, lethal, uh, lethal programs. Taking that step is the logical step. Science says to take it. Facts say to take it. Everything mm -hmm. says to take these steps. So y y your question is, is, is bang on. So why don't they? And it's because if they take that step, which is absolutely correct and absolutely would provide more safety, if something then happens at those beaches, because no measure is 100%, right? Some of these yeah. might be 90% effective. The current program is 5% effective. Even at 90% effective, there's, there's, there's a 10% pro, uh, there's a 10% chance that something can still happen at that beach. Yeah. They would get, they would get, you know, political adversaries would see that as an opportunity to, to, you know, blame them. Uh, yeah. And probably so would some parts of the media, not all part of the media. So they're scared. They're scared of taking what is the right decision and doing the right thing because if something still happens, mm -hmm. uh, someone gets bitten at one of, the, one of these beaches, um, then they'll be blamed and they'll be torn apart and they're just worried for their own job and they're kind of covering, covering their own ass. So, uh, yeah, I think the important thing to note there, though, is 
people are currently uh, and always have been getting bitten at netted and drumline beaches. It doesn't yeah. work. There's, there's over 65 incidents of it happening at a, at a beach with a net or a drumline. So they're not scared of re removing something perfect to try something new and up and coming and whatever it might be. They're scared of removing something highly, highly, highly imperfect mm -hmm. to go to something more modern. So it, logically, it makes no sense. So it must be out yeah. of fear or stubbornness or something like that. I mean, it would have to be because there are so many, like the film showed that there are much more effective methods that are just easier to deploy. They're probably cheaper to do also. They I mean. are. They are. We, we did that. It's not in the film, but we costed that out. After we finished the film, we literally <laughs> sat down with some of the organizations in the film, HSI, Sea Shepherd, uh, AMCS. We sat down as a group and we went, okay, there's a bit of backstory to this actually. We, we, we went, let's take every protected beach. That's the government language. I hate it. Let's take every protected beach in Queensland, which means a net with a drum line or, or, or uh, which means a beach with a net or a drum line. Let's take every single protected beach, go to the government report that they had done by a consulting firm to look into alternatives, to look into non-lethal alternatives. Let's see what that report said would be the ideal solution for each beach because it varies. It varies. North Queensland and, and the Gold Coast, that's a, that's a long distance. It's a long, it's a long coastline. Um, what works at each beach will be different. Ones yeah. with two headlands or, or a bay, it's perfect to put a shark enclosure. You know, yeah. long, straight beaches in northern Queensland, for example, very, very turbid water, bad mm. visibility. Um, drones might not be the solution there. The, the, yeah. So... so we went through that report that the government had made okay. by, uh, by a consulting firm that specialised in this and went, what is the ideal solution for every single beach? We then went to all those vendors and got pricing and we costed it out. And after upfront spend on infrastructure, because you have to pay to have barriers built, you have to pay yeah. to buy your, fleet, buy your fleet of drones and train your drone pilots and so on and so forth. After that upfront spend, the program would cost half as much to run. 50% really? redu reduction. So again, as to wow. your questions, your questions as to look and, and those, and those are estimates in terms of yeah. um, for the running costs, we're estimating what the government might pay a drone pilot. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, the government could argue that we underestimated by 5% or 10% and therefore our estimate is off by five or 10%, but still we're half, we're half what the current program costs to run. Um, and you're building assets you're building infrastructure you've got drone uh, you've got enclosures that you're building you've got a fleet of drones that you can use you know you actually have something to show for it whereas the yeah. current program the current program is just a consumable like you got to send out a boat every two days to check the hooks and kill the sharks they've caught put yeah. new bait on you got to do that every two days and you, like it's just, just it's, not it's a consumable it's a consumable you know and have anything to show for it um, yeah. Whereas this other program costs half as much and you actually have something to show for it. Assets that'll last five, 10 years longer. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, sorry, I took that on a bit of a tangent. I jumped in there <laughs> though, because I thought that was important to mention. Is, no, that, it is. is that It's not in the film, but we did that exercise. I mean, that's crazy though, that like the government is just stubborn enough to actually not use something that works better, but also do something that costs less money. Like that's just crazy and to me. And that's something we've been uh, starting to use in our messaging, uh, in our messaging here more like on social media, locally. Um, it doesn't work internationally, but locally, we're really leaning into that angle of saying, are you okay with your taxpayer dollars going to this? Yeah. So environmental side, uh, th side of things put to one side, uh, the, um, uh, the, the human safety thing, put to one side just for a moment they're important issues but if you put all yeah. that to the, to, to one side you, you also got to ask are you okay with millions and millions and millions of dollars of your taxpayer money going to this every year so yeah, yeah it's 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 crazy yeah it, i i wish i could understand why um so they're in the in like the shark nets it's not just sharks that get caught in these nets so do you mind talking about some of the other species that actually are getting caught in these nets, like including protected and endangered species, right? 
Correct. So uh, let's use Queensland as an as an example, uh, okay. because it's the state that it's the state because it slightly varies between New South Wales and Queensland. Um, the programs but they, they're fundamentally the same, but they have slight differences. We'll talk about Queensland because it's it's the worst state, if you like, yeah. in terms of um, they they kill the most sharks, they have the most culling equipment in the water, so on and so forth. So Queensland has nineteen target species of shark, which is absurd. <laughs> New South Wales has three. Bull, wow. tiger, white. Queensland has nineteen. And we're talking animals on that on that target list, such as the great hammerhead, which, according to the International Shark Attack file, has never killed a human ever. Anyway, wow. and that's a critically uh, endangered species. Yes. So wow. there is nineteen target species, uh, and some of most of them should not be on that list. That's yeah. it's absurd. Um, Outside of that target species is pretty much everything else. Is 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 there's turtles, rays, humpback whales, minke wow. whales, um, all these animals that that all get all get caught. Um, dolphins is probably the one that really. Dolphins are probably the really one that that, that get to people the most because um, mm. dolphins do die in these nets relatively frequently. Humpback whales are often released because they're, you know, they're, they're big, they're a hardier animal, they can, they can survive yeah. for, you know, an hour or two or three in a net and get, get released. Dolphins, that's not the case. Dolphin, wow. The fatality rate for a dolphin that gets entangled or hooked is, is quite high. So, um, yeah, dolphins, turtles, different species of whales, rays, uh, all types of rays, even manta rays, get get caught and killed in these programs. So, um, far more than sharks too. You know, so, really? so, some some beaches it's maybe fifty fifty. Some it's like they barely catch a shark ever. It's all bycatch. It's all bycatch. And so, like, there is no issue with that. It seems like, like why? I just I have a hard time understanding if there's such high bycatch rates. Like, how that's not an issue with the government. Uh, it, it, it has never the reason I made this film is because not enough people knew and I, I, yeah. I firmly believe that most of society is is um, you know ethical and moral and they would not be okay with this program if they knew about it so yeah. the reason it's been fine to now is it, it's it's operated you know 500 meters away from shore no one really sees it no one really knows what it is no one really knows what's going on uh, yeah. and they could get away with what they they get away with anything basically yeah um so that's the concept of the work that the organizations f that feature in the film do the the yeah. work they do in documenting it um and then us kind of bring it all together into a feature-length documentary the idea is to get it seen and get it known known because uh like i said i think i think yeah most of society is not okay with it it's not okay with it. And and the reason governments can get away with it is because they did it in secrecy and society didn't know, uh, but now they do. I think they're going to feel a, a lot, lot, lot more pressure to, 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 to make these programs better. Hopefully. I mean, it's just ridiculous that these programs are even still in existence right now. And one of the saddest parts of the documentary for me, obviously, was all of that footage of like these animals, like in these nets and hooked on drum lines. It's just, it's so sad to see. Um, so none of those animals could actually get rescued by, uh, by you guys or any of the people near them, because I mean, there's, they're going to get hit with a massive fine. Right. So why is, why is there a fine in place for people that might want to cut loose an endangered sea turtle or an endangered shark or uh, dolphin whale species? So, so there's two, there's two fines that, that add up to a very, okay. very big fine. And I'll, I'll explain them. Uh, one of them's relatively new. One of them's been around for a long time. So the one that's been around the longest uh, is the fine for, and it's not specific to shark nets and drum lines. Okay. In, the fish, in the Fisheries Act, there's essentially, a, there's essentially a rule in there, a regulation or a clause in there that says you can't interfere with fishing equipment. Uh, and that means cut it, destroy it, reel it in, whatever, whatever that might be. You're, you're not to interfere with, with fishing equipment. That is, there's two funny things here. That is the rule they take to fine you up to $66,000 Australian wow. dollars. So well, maybe 50000 US dollars. 
Mm. Um, if you cut an animal out of uh, out of a net or un- unhook it from a, from a drum line, that's the fine they use for that. That's been around okay. for a very very long time. The comical thing about them using that regulation of the Fishing Act to fine you is it's essentially an, an admission that shark nets and drum lines are fishing equipment. Oh, okay. Because, because they're using they're using a clause that says you can't interfere with fishing equipment to yeah. say, hey, you interfered with a shark net, we're going to fine you. So it's 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 in effect an admission that this is fishing equipment. It's not a barrier. Because they it's not... say it's supposed to protect you. It's protection equipment. They so say, they them calling that. it fishing... Oh, it wow. Is, but, it, but it very clearly is designed to be a fishing, equi- fishing equipment. A shark net is a gill net designed to entangle yeah. and kill a shark. It's that simple. A drum line is a big shark fishing hook and de- designed to catch and kill a shark. It, yeah. it's, it is that simple. But the messaging they put out to the public is not that. It's, it's, it's there to protect you and it keeps sharks away from you and blah, blah, blah. But then if you dare go touch it, they'll fine you for interfering with fishing equipment. So comical, comical double standards there. Um, the new fine that they put in place as we were filming this was a fine for entering a 20 meter exclusion zone around any shark control equipment. Wow. So the reason they did that is, uh, in my firm opinion, and I'm very confident of this, is to stop people filming, including us and other organizations that were working in this space. Because underwater, you can't get a good shot at 20 meters. You know, anyone that's dived before with, with, you know, be it a professional camera or be it a GoPro, um, 20 metres is too much water between you and the subject to get any sort of valuable shot. So they knew yeah. well and good that by putting a 20 metre exclusion zone, uh, yeah, 20 metre exclusion zone, uh, that they're going to stop documentation of this program, which is what they want. Luckily, yeah. luckily, um, we didn't have that much footage that we'd shot ourselves by the time they put this law in place. So we were actually in some serious trouble. But luckily, all the other people that work in this space all the other organizations in the, that work in this space had years and years and years of footage wow. get banked who, and they were very generous and gave that to us to use. So that kind of, awesome. saved, kind of saved the documentary. Uh, yeah. So that fine, if you go, if you go within 20 meters of, um, uh, of a shark control, uh, shark control, shark culling, uh, piece of equipment is, um, is $26,000. Uh, so wow. 66 plus 26, whatever, oh, my math isn't that good uh, <laughs> off the top of my head, over $90,000, I think, is, yeah. is, is the invoice you will get uh, should you dare wow. go and save, save, save an animal. So, um, yeah, the, 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 if, for the people who have seen the documentary, you, you'll see uh, our official line in the documentary is that um, this is the law and we abided by it yeah. officially. Uh, but, um, yes, there were times, uh, oh. there were times where, uh, that animal was going to die or was not going to die if someone did something about it and maybe, or maybe not, um, something happened off camera that we weren't legally able to put in the, in, in the film. Uh, but yeah, I just see a question down there. I might, an- I might answer if that's okay. With Go you. for it. Um, how would they know unless they see you cutting it? So, uh, the, the the most densely netted and drumlined part of of the coastline in Australia is on the Gold Coast, Surfers Paradise. So the reason uh, the the reason that they will know for sure on the Gold Coast, maybe other areas you can get away with it. Hey, Maddie, how are you? Uh, the, the, maybe you can get away with it in other areas, but the reason you will absolutely one hundred percent get caught and seen on the Gold Coast is nosy nanas uh, nosy grandmas in high-rise buildings so wow. the, the the gold coast is basically a skyline of skyscrapers along the beach like maybe miami or something like that um and there's a lot of people in high-rises with binoculars that that look out there now that can be a pro and a con some people see nets uh see whales get caught in nets and they will call that in and the the the, the, the whale can be rescued so it can be a good thing uh, but there's also very nosy people who will notice that people are hanging around shark nets and suspect what they might be doing, uh, and wow. they will also dob you in. So uh, to answer your question, on the Sunshine Coast, on the Gold Coast, in highly populated areas, you will get dobbed in 100% uh, without a doubt. I have had personal experience of that, um, uh, as, had, as, has, as has had 
uh, one of the other people viewing this stream right now. <laughs> so, yeah, you absolutely will get seen. You absolutely will get dobbed in. In more remote areas, say, for example, the drum lines in uh, perhaps, you know, up in Cairns or, or, you know, around Magnetic Island off Townsville up in far, far north Queensland, you probably got a better chance of, of getting away with uh, releasing things or being within the 20 meter exclusion zone. Not that you should. Uh, not but, officially uh, encouraging I, that. I, 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 yeah, we're not officially saying do that. <laughs> um, but yeah, in the really populated areas, which are the most densely netted and drum, drum lined areas, you will get seen 100%. And their response time to someone near a net is a shitload faster, pardon my, la uh, uh, pardon my language. <laughs> is a shitload faster than it is to an angle, an animal that's entangled. So they why is that? Like, they're more worried about someone messing with their nets than, like, helping an endangered species that's caught one of their nets. That's what the, that's what the response time seemed to suggest, yeah. That's yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a, uh, the more we dug into this pro, it almost doesn't seem real. Like, it almost... Like, it makes no sense. It's 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 almost fanciful, but like tr trust me, from you spending two two and a half years, whatever it is now, um, working on this, and you you start pulling at threads, and you 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 poke and you prod at at, at um uh, at things that don't seem quite right, and the more you do, the the crazier it gets, like it yeah. crazier it gets. It 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 gives me little faith in government. Um, mm -hmm. the 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 fact that they continue to run this program despite all the evidence that they shouldn't. Um, and it doesn't work and it's actually, you know, at best a placebo at yeah, worst, exactly. it's putting at worst, it's putting people at risk because we've got a lot of evidence to show that it brings large sharks closer to shore. Yeah. Cause I mean, uh, that's a free meal for these large sharks. Like in the documentary, it, you guys talked about like these fish and animals are going to be struggling in these nets. Sharks are going to sense that vibration struggling in the water and they're going to come closer. I am 1,000% certain that is the case. So it didn't make the film but uh, because we only just got it. So we did freedom of information requests through this, through this whole process. Freedom okay. of information is, is, is a process where you can ask for information from a government pro, uh, program, a government department, sorry, yeah. and they have to hand it over to you unless there's sensitive information in there, in which case they can redact things. Um, we did a lot of those through this process as part of our yeah. research research, um, and so on. One of them that got delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed, and we finally got it a couple of weeks ago, was videos that these contractors take. So the government contractors that go out there and they bait the hooks and they, they, they kill yeah. the sharks that they find. Video from them, right? We just got it. And uh, we'd gotten photos faster, but the video request took a long, long time. Uh, okay. the amount of videos in that freedom of information package, delivery, whatever you want to call it, the amount of videos in there that have sharks half bitten in half, uh, bitten in half, huge chunks out of them. Like we're talking great white size jaw bites out of sharks. Like, wow. like the amount of that, and we haven't released it yet and we will, um, the amount of the amount of those that are in there and it was in the photos as well, but the video is a lot more compelling. Um, yeah. It's crazy. It's, it's, it is crazy. There's one even where we haven't released this yet, but there's this one even where um, the guy filming the, the, the government worker, yeah. he like walks you through basically in a, in a short smartphone clip, he walks you through how stupid these programs are. So he goes, Oh yeah, here we got a great hammerhead in the net. And it's got big chunks bitten out of it. So wow. not a dangerous shark, caught in mm -hmm. a net, dead. Big chunks out of it, which means there's a bigger shark around. He then goes, <laughs> he then pans the camera up and he goes, yeah, we're just here off Coolum Beach, which is a really popular beach on the Sunshine Coast in Queensland. Right. And, and it literally, as he goes up, like there's, there's surfers and swimmers like right there. They're like not far away at all. Yeah, no and shark attack like, though. No, no, no. But like the point is that was luck that there wasn't because yeah. that great white that came for a feed, I assume it was a great white by the jaw size, that, that would have had a swim, swim around. And, and the only thing that stopped there being attack on that beach or not that day from that great white that you lured in and then aroused mm -hmm. into a feeding state was luck. Yeah. It, was the gov it was pure luck, dumb luck on the government's behalf that that didn't backfire and, and, and cause a serious issue 
But yeah, that, that, that clip just sums up how stupid the program is. He literally goes from a harmless shark, bitten in half by a much larger shark, points up, swimmers and surfers right there. It's like, you couldn't make this stuff up. No, because I know one of the big points that you were making in the film was that there are a lot of these animals that are free meals. There's bites taken out of them, but there's no shark in the net. They just, they didn't get caught. Yep. So yep. it's there's like, this... what is the point of that if, it was a bigger shark that is somehow not getting caught in the stack. Yeah, yeah. And, and the worst thing you're doing in that situation is you're, 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 you're and, and you've got to remember that this is happening like day in, day out. Like every yeah. week, every week there's stuff getting caught on the, on the same nets or in the same drum lines. Um, over time, you know, obviously there's science behind how long it takes for a shark to habituate into something. Um, uh, so we won't go too deep into that, and I'm not I'm not making this claim. But um, over time, you do this for long enough, there's a potential that you habituate sharks to go. There's food in this area, and yeah. this area happens to be a popular beach. Because like, I mean, it's that dumb. repetitive kind of thing, right? Like they keep coming back. There's food every time they're there. They're gonna start. Uh, it'll be like a pattern for them now. Co correct, correct. And it might not happen. It might not happen with great whites, for example, because they're so migratory and and yeah. and, and they um, they might only be at that beach for for you know a few days or a week or a day or whatever it might mm. be. So so it would vary species to species, and some species habituate faster than other species. But the point is, by putting food on a silver platter at a popular swimming beach um, regularly, that's yeah. a dumb idea. It's endangering people. I mean, that's uh, that's more dangerous than. I, it's just it's it's unbelievable. And then if there's an attack, the sharks are going to be blamed for that one. Of course, not they the are. government for drawing them in closer to shore. Yep. yep, exactly right. It's it's madness. The the deeper you dig, the more mad it is. And and we do we do the best we can in ninety minutes of of, yeah. of getting this topic across in 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 the documentary. Uh, uh, but you know, there's also a lot that couldn't make the cut, and that'll continue to come out through our socials and and, and other platforms yeah. over time as we keep exposing this until it until it stops. Um, so yeah, documentary is an, a, a, an excellent place to start. Uh, but um, there's so much that didn't make the cut. Trust me, like it's it's yeah. it's, it's mental. You guys will have to do like a director's cut or something sometime. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be long. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So. I mean, that's just crazy to me. Um, so are there like legal, I feel like the, the documentary you guys talked about, like, is it legal for the government to be killing endangered species in these nets? Was that something you guys did some research on? Yeah. So the, the, this is a complicated one and I'll, tr I'll try and boil it down to the basics. Mm -hmm. It is, it is not legal to kill protected or endangered species in Australia unless you have an exemption. You have to apply for an exemption from the federal government and get an okay. exemption. Now, the Queensland government, for example, do not have that exemption. They've never applied for it. They've never been granted huh. it. They don't have it. The reason, the reason they claim, and, and obviously a lot of people disagree, but the reason they claim they are allowed to kill, it, kill them anyway without that exemption uh, which they wouldn't be granted. There's no way that they would be granted that exemption. Yeah. Um, the reason they claim they are able to, to still keep killing protected and endangered species is because their program, which started in 1962, was in existence and it was, it was happening before the Environmental Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act. That's a mouthful. I don't usually get that wrong, yeah. but I did. <laughs> um, the EPBC Act came into place in the year 1999 or 2000. So there's a loophole in that act, and this is, this is where I'm, it can get complicated. I'm trying to keep it nice and simple. There was a loophole in that act that came into place in 2000 to say yeah. any activity that happened before this came out is allowed to continue as long as it doesn't expand or intensify or there's a couple of other legal legalese yeah. words in there. The thing is, so that's the loophole they claim. They say, we're doing it before, okay. we're allowed to keep doing it, don't need an exemption. Yeah. Sorry. The thing is, though, they have expanded and intensified the program, which you're not allowed to do if you're going to use that loophole. Yeah. Which so Queensland that, did that a lot more than New South Wales did. Yeah, right? New South Wales, like while the program still has its faults, is is better than Queensland. Queensland mm -hmm. is like, it's it's 
unbelievable. 19 target species as opposed to three in New South Wales. Like, are you kidding yourself? Over 400, over 400 pieces of shark culling equipment, that's nets and drum lines combined, yeah. over 400 pieces of equipment in the water year round. New South Wales has 51 nets and they're only in, uh, and they're in, they're, they're only in the water for half the year. They take them out for whale okay. migration season. So, but Queensland doesn't do that, right? No, no. There was push. There was push from. So the Queensland, um, the Queensland d government department that runs this program, okay. uh, it, it 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 formed a scientific working group one or two years ago, I think, after pressure from the federal government because they, okay. it was the Wild West. Like they were just doing whatever the hell they want, right? Yeah. So there was pressure for them to create a scientific working group, which they did. Um, they largely stacked it with their own people and so on and so forth. But let's okay. put that aside. They formed a scientific working group. That scientific working group last year said nets should come out for whale migration season. Okay. That was a recommendation from the scientific working group. That yeah. recommendation sat on the minister's desk, the minister responsible for this program, for I want to say almost a year or over a year with no wow. action taken. No action taken until last week. I don't know if this is a, co a coincidence that it's so close to our film coming out or not uh, in Australia. Uh, but just last week, they made a statement that we are not going to act on that advice from the scientific working group. Really? And we are going... We, any changes to the program are, I think the word was, off the agenda. So sat on, it, sat on, his, desk in the, sat on his desk in the too hard basket for... 12 months ish give or take and then said no we're not going to do that i know the scientific working group says we should do it uh, but we're not going to do that so unbelievable yeah it, the queensland is it, yeah it, it's an interesting state i grew up here born and bred queenslander like literally lived my whole until until about six months ago lived my whole life here yeah uh uh and it's an interesting state. It really is an interesting state. So, so Brisbane, which is the capital city, close to Gold Coast, which is um, the largest regional city, as in not capital city in, in the yeah. world. It's a tourism hub. Um, it, it's quite progressive. And then the rest of Queensland, um, it's very like mining heavy and, and, and resource heavy and agriculture heavy. And it's, it's like two states, really. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's insane. So I don't know, would you say like the majority of Australians really care about this issue or like they don't know? I feel like there should be kind of be a little bit more uproar and more people angry about this. So, and that's why, we, that's why I made the film. That's what I want to achieve. More people being aware, more people pissed off about it. That's that simple. Uh, yeah, that, that's, that's what the film is here for. So there's two answers to your question though. Uh, do people support this program or are they angry about it? Yes and no. And that's because most people don't understand what the program is. People okay. think shark nets are a barrier that keeps sharks away from beaches mm -hmm. and they don't know that they're there to tank entangle and kill sharks. The pe there is a fundamental misunderstanding of these programs in the public. Uh, yeah. And I feel personally, I feel that the government perpetuate that misunderstanding. So it's the people that listen to the government on this that are kind of, that's where that perception comes from. But yeah, they just don't have the knowledge and they go, shark net, sounds like it keeps sharks away from the beach. That sounds like a good thing. So yeah. there's a fundamental misunderstanding of the program and, and that means there's not as much outrage as there, sh as there should be. The that's other right. thing I'll say is that when news do, uh, when news or media do a poll, for example, on their Facebook page or an official poll by calling people and research companies have done these polls too, uh, commissioned by commissioned by organisations, for example. When there's a poll that says, are you comfortable with sharks being killed for your safety at the beach? It's somewhere between 70 to 90% of people say no. Really? 70 to 90% of Australians, and it's always in that window, it's always in that window. And, and the reason I say 70 to 90%, that's not the margin of error of one survey. That's like we've looked at 10 surveys. Really? And the, the, the result will sit anywhere from 70 to 90%. When asked, are you okay with sharks being killed for a beach safety program? They all say no. So 70 to 90% of, of, of Australia oppose 
these programs wow. in, in principle or morally or ethically or however you want to put it. But the thing is, I don't think they understand that that's exactly what the current program is. Yeah. So I think they ask that question. When, I think most people, when they, they ask that question in a survey, they, they see it as a hypothetical question. Like, yeah, they don't understand. Okay like, if, this is happening right now. Yeah, I think they, they I think they see it as a hypoth- hypothetical thing. Like, if, if sharks were killed for your safety at the beach, would you be okay with it? And they say, nah. When really, the question is, are you okay with the current shark culling programs that exist in Australia? Is what that question is actually is. It's all about and, the phrasing by the government. And and yeah, and 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 the answer is resounding. Seventy to ninety nine percent of of the public say no, we're not okay with it. So we just need to educate more so people realize that is exactly what's going on right now and has been for yeah. a long time. And then I, th- I think the public's morals and ethics will do the rest from there. They, yeah. will, um, they will not be okay with it. Hopefully they're vocal about it. And, and hopefully that's what that issue, this issue needs uh, to spur progress, hopefully. Definitely. And I loved it because, I mean, that's the goal of the movie is ultimately to educate people and – do you think the government's kind of starting to feel that pressure and that the public's not exactly turning in their favor? And yeah. I mean, like I they that, prevented people from going into exclusion zones to document it probably for that exact reason, right? Yeah, the exclusion zone is them scared. The, some of the comments that the politicians who are directly responsible for these programs, like it sits yeah. within their portfolio. Um, some of the comments they make towards uh, uh, myself personally or towards the documentary in general, uh, they stink of someone who's threatened and scared. Uh, like, yeah. just it's it's just dripping out of them. Like, they are shitting themselves, and they are <laughs> not happy. They are not happy with us for exposing this, and they're acting like petulant children about it. Um, and wow. to me, to me, that that that's a great sign. There's such yeah. a positive. There's such a positive because someone who's confident in their program and confident in themselves doesn't act like that. Exactly. So, yeah, to me, it's a really good thing. There's a quote that Sea Shepherd posted, actually, uh, the other day. Um, they posted a quote from the Minister for Fisheries. Mm-hmm. The Fisheries Department is who runs this these culls. Um, they qu- posted a quote from the Fisheries de- uh, d- Department, essentially, like, you know, dismissing, the, taking nets out or dismissing the film. I don't remember exactly what it was. And they posted a quote with it saying, you know, mm-hmm. first they laugh at you, then they attack you then you win or something to that effect. It's a fairly well-known quote in terms of fighting for social causes or environmental causes. Uh, I don't don't remember it verbatim. And it's so right. Like, like they're not laughing at us anymore. They're attacking us because they're shitting themselves and and change is coming. And um, yeah, they, they should get on board with it. If they're smart, they'll get on board with it and be more proactive about it um, before public sentiment, completely before it goes from 70 to 90 percent to 100 percent and and they're voted out they should really get on board yeah because i mean you think if they're so scared of getting voted like voted out of office i mean they would kind of jump on the bandwagon if there's so many people behind it so i feel like it's starting to turn though they're starting to get afraid and they're starting to really realize like oh crap like people are going to start coming for me next yeah, yeah. If they haven't realized it yet, they, 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 they certainly will soon. Like, like I'll give you another example of, of the, the, heavy, the heavy community sentiment against these programs, but mm. government digging their heels in. So I just got done kind of saying Queensland's far, far, far worse than New South Wales, but yeah. New South Wales ain't perfect either. Don't get me mm. wrong. They still have 51 nets at, at beaches half, half, uh, for half the year. They still kill a lot of sharks a lot of, and way more bycatch than sharks. But where I'm going with this is councils. So these programs are run by state governments, not the federal government, not uh-huh. councils, local councils, state government. That middle tier of government is who runs these programs. But councils in New South Wales that have this equipment at their beaches recently were asked for feedback. So uh, as a formal five-year review process uh, that that the state government have to do, they go to community and stakeholders and say, hey, what do you think of these, these programs and where we're going with our program, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Councils voted, I think it was five out of the eight councils that have nets and drum lines. I might be wrong, I might be slightly wrong there, but I believe it's five out of eight councils that have nets and drum lines at, at their beaches in New South Wales, this is. 
voted to say, okay, so they, they brought it up at a council meeting. They're like, how, how should we respond to fisheries? Fisheries have asked for feedback. They're engaging with us as an important stakeholder. How do we respond? Five of eight of them voted unanimously, unanimously to say, we do not want shark nets at our beaches. Wow. So, so then that vote then got f- turned into a formal response to, to fisheries to say, hey, we discussed this at a council meeting. We unanimously moved to say we don't want these at our beaches. That's our response. That's our position on them. Yeah. So most councils with with most nets at their beaches, um, the official line that's come out of fisheries from that in New South Wales is we thank you for your feedback. We don't think we're going to change anything. Really? So yeah. they're not they're not listening to anybody. Like no, no matter one, what. No one. And the funny thing is, you know, councils clearly are listening. Yeah. So council, local councils are listening to their local community, which is what they then took that. They, they understood the will of their community and they put that in their formal response to, to yeah. fisheries. It's, fish, it's, it's all state government level fisheries that are just going like this. They just don't. don't, don't yeah. Yeah. It's, it, and I don't get it. I truly, I truly, truly don't get it. I do because I know they're doing it because they're scared and they don't want to be the person that made the change and then they can get torn apart politically. I, I get that that's why they don't want to do it, but I also don't get it because you're, you're, alienating, you're alienating your own people, your own voters. So, yeah, exactly. Mm, it's so short-sighted, I feel, to, to ignore this. So short-sighted. Yeah. Um, so one of another pretty big part of the documentary was when the depart the Queensland Department of Agriculture and Fisheries, their own witness said, if they stop shark culling tomorrow, that there would be no impact on swimmers' safety. I mean, yep. what is like the larger message of this statement? But also the fact that this was made like in court, like in a legal court. They don't. Yeah, this is the funny thing. That's the first time anyone from that department has ever said anything of that nature. Really? And you have to be put on the stand under oath for the truth to come out. Is what I take mm-hmm. from that. So, in 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 all the nonsense that you will put out in press releases or in in your you, you know your misinformation that you put out about what shark nets and drumlines are and how effective they might be, all that rubbish that they put out, um, pretending it works. That rubbish stops when you're on a stand and you're under oath. Yeah, and that's, I mean it gets me, real. That like, gets real then because you can go to jail for perjury, and and that's the first time I think the truth has been told by that department. And it takes being put on the stand and 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 being under oath for that truth to come out. And and that 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 instance, and we tried to make that a pretty big moment in the film where the audience is just like, "What the hell?" Um, that moment says everything to me about this whole situation and these programs and everything that moment sums it up is when you take the government's own expert witness and scientist and you put them on the stand and say, does this work? They have to go. Nah. Unbelievable. So that's, it's that, that one's crazy to me. Um, I mean, it's all crazy to me, but that one specifically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So real quick. So I think, I, Cause I want to save this and repost it. And I should yeah, be able to do. send this to you to repost. So we will, I think if you want to, I think we should have about five minutes left. I, I think if it goes over the hour mark, it might not it save. So you, I think, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I so I do have, um, I guess one more important question to ask. And I think there's a few others if there's some time left, but yep. like, what are some of the best ways to be an envoy for sharks? Like you guys, you have resources on your website to, help this help with this issue right so our act now page is is the best is is the best resource and and uh it's uh envoyfilm.com.au forward slash act now and there's three key things that we want you to do like definitely want you to do when you've when you've uh, when you've seen this film one is sign our petition it's on change.org it's just gone over sixty thousand signatures already so it's it's wow. crushing it and i think that'll help Two is we've built an automatic tool with a pre-scripted email so you can send it. It doesn't matter if you're in Australia or not, uh, you can send it to the, the appropriate minister for this. So okay. if you're in Australia, it'll send it to your local minister, uh, as in for your electorate. Um, and if you are anywhere else, it will send it to the head of 
the head of fisheries and to the premier okay. for the state. Um, so there's a tool to, to be able to bl blast them an email and um, tell them why this program doesn't work and why it should stop. Step three is sign up for protests and paddle outs. So that one's more for Australians, but if you're over, for, if you're overseas, sign up for sure because you never know when we're going to have you know enough people in an area and a protest will pop up. Um, and that'll yeah. make it, that'll make us that'll make news. Like if if you have people in other countries protesting what we're doing in Australia, that's big mm -hmm. news. So yeah. uh, the other one is sign up for protests or paddle outs. Um, then there's a couple of other little other actions you can take on that page, but they're not as important. One of them is okay. a short little nine question survey you can fill out for us um, that helps us gain data that we can then use to lobby government. So that okay. short, um, that short, uh, Max, a couple of people are asking if that link can go in here. Maybe while I'm talking, if you, if you can, maybe just type envoyfilm.com.au in there, if you can. Um, sorry, but I'll keep going. Uh, the, the, um, where was I going with this? Yes, I remember. The other, the other actions you can take is a little short nine question survey. So we just want to track how your sentiment changed from, from watching this film and, and from learning what Australia does to its oceans uh, and whether you'd be less likely to come here as a tourist and so on and so forth. We can track those things. And that data is important because we can go to government and go, hey, people who watched our film, you know, 60% of them said they're less likely to travel to Australia. Um, wow. uh, or, or, you know, 90% of people were shocked to learn what Australia does. You know what I mean? Like it gives us yeah. good data. So there's a survey you can do there. The direct actions are far more important. There's a survey you can do there. The other thing you can do is just, if you've seen the film, go and rate it on IMDb because if it gets a good rating, you know, the algorithm will jack it up and it'll recommend the film to more people. Awesome. More people seeing it means more people aware, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, three main actions, a couple of other little ones, but it's envoyfilm.com.au, then click on the Act Now page. Okay. Um, so here's one more question because we got like three minutes left. Um, yep. I've been wanting to see this movie. Will it be released in Canada in the near future? Yeah, okay, really, really good question. Um, so at the moment, it is out now in US and UK on Discovery+. Plus. It is coming out next Wednesday in cinemas in Australia. So uh, for that one, mm -hmm. tickets are at watch.envoyfilm.com.au. You can see what your closest cinema is. You can, you can buy tickets. For every awesome. other region... Just this week, it is on display and we are selling the rights to all the other regions at the, the Cannes Film Festival. So we're not in the festival ourselves. Like, like we're, not, we're not entered. We're not up for an award. But Cannes also has basically an industry event attached to it, which is like an expo. It's like an expo. Eh, 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 eh. <clears throat> what word am I trying to say? It's like an expo um, where distributors sell their films and stuff like that. So okay. Canada, I believe we got offers for um europe i believe we got office for so um yeah basically uh the the, the, the all the other regions are coming so just awesome. stay tuned follow us on socials uh it should be out in in all other regions relatively soon so we're, okay. we're just keen to we're, we're just keen to get it out there so a, any distributor that looks like they're going to do a, a relatively good job with it and, and we're interested in eyeballs not money so yeah. any distributor that comes to us with an offer that, that we know is going to um, get this in front of eyeballs, we'll be taking it, and it'll be in that uh, it'll be in that that region. Yeah, as, as as quick as the platform can get it up, basically. Awesome. Um, I think that's it. I I really appreciate you coming on. I think this was a great conversation. So thank you for answering everything. Coming on, this was a great time for me and hopefully everyone got to learn something yeah thank you i, I appreciate it. it was really good uh, you asked them really really good questions and pl please do save it and and you know post yeah. it to your page and share us a copy because they were yeah. good questions that prompted important answers from me so uh yeah very very good uh very good hosting very good interviewing thank you <laughs> i think um uh, I, I think it's super important and um i appreciate all the people viewing right now and i appreciate all the comments um, and all the questions, but uh, yeah, I, th I think I think uh, we make sure we get it out there after this as well because uh, a yeah. lot more people need to hear it than, than we're able to join right now. So yeah, definitely. All right, thank you. Um, gonna end it right now, but yeah, again, thank you for everything. This is great. Beautiful. Thanks. And if right. anyone wants any more, we're going on TikTok tomorrow, right? Yeah. So we'll be doing cool. this again on TikTok tomorrow at the same time. TikTok live tomorrow, same time. If anyone's interested, thank you. All right. See you.